Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the deterministic finite automata construction, and uh, the language is given over here. Uh, the W is over the input zero comma one, so all the inputs that you are going to get it is on the combination of zero and one. So it is a binary string, and when it is divisible by four, we have to accept it. Whenever the number is divisible by four, we have to accept it. So one shortcut for uh, these kind of elements when you want to find a binary string divisible by any number we have to find all possible remainder of that number and we have to construct a state for each okay for example when you are dividing a number by 4 what all the possible remainders we will be getting your numbers i can take it as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 i'll just take it till 8 when you are dividing these numbers by 4 what will be the remainder of each when you are dividing us one by it can start from the 0 to starting from this number 0 okay if i am dividing it by 4 uh, what will be the remainder i'm going to get 0 0 one when you are dividing it by 4 the remainder will be 1 Two by four, remainder two. Three by four, the remainder is three. Again, four by four, the remainder is going to be zero. Four is perfectly divisible by four. The remainder will be zero. Again, five. When you are dividing it by four, your remainder will be one. Six by four, remainder will be two. Seven by four, remainder is three. And eight is perfectly divisible by four. Remainder is zero. So it goes on. So the remainder will be either zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, or zero, one, two, three. Okay. So what you are going to do is we are going to construct a state for each and every remainders. So I take the remainders. So the remainders are either zero, one, two, or three. So I am going to construct the state as remainder zero, remainder one. Reminder two and reminder three. So these three are the possible states where we are able to lead in when you are dividing a number by four. Okay, it will either generate a reminder as zero, one, two, or three. Construct a state for each. And what is the meaning when you are into a uh, into this place of zero? When the reminder is perfectly zero, that is perfectly divisible category, right? So we are going to make this zero as the final state since. The remainder is zero. The number is perfectly divisible by four. I'm just going to complete it. Okay. So this is the starting state. Your uh, zero is the starting state, and this is the final state since the remainder is zero. Whenever the remainder is zero, it is perfectly acceptable by the given language. So it is perfectly divisible by the given input. Okay. Now, when the uh, remainder is zero, either four or eight or twelve will lead into the state. Okay. Now we'll see what happened in each and every transitions. Okay. Now I'll take a state. It is a DFA. How does you de how do you define a DFA? DFA is a place from each and every state on each and every input symbol. We should have a transition, right? Now we are in the state zero. We should find the transition of what happened if a zero occurs or what happened if a one occurs. So we have to find the transition for all possible states. And once you complete it, it the process will be complete. Okay, so starting from the state zero, uh, I can just give the indication as Q not Q one, Q two, and Q three for our reference. So I'll start from the state Q not. I'm going to verify what happen if I have a zero. What happen if I have a one? Okay, so what happen if I have a zero? When I have a zero, when I divide zero by four, the remainder is going to be zero. So I'm going to stay in the same state. Okay, so zero is a place. There is nothing, no input is added. So when I have a zero, it will generate the same remainder. So I'm going to stay in the same state. When I have a one, one dividing by four, I get the remainder as one. Okay, so the number one. When I'm dividing one by four, I get the remainder as one. So I'm just making a transition to Q1 state. So for remainder as one, I have the state as Q1. So I'm just going to take a transition to that place. Okay, so now Q not when the input is zero one, we have defined the transition. Now we'll uh, start from the state Q one. When can we reach Q one? Whenever you start processing an input, the processing actually starts from the starting state, right? So it takes at least a one to reach to the state Q one. From Q not only if your input is one, I'm able to reach Q one. So one is mandatory. We have a one. 
that is a mandatory constraint only in you your input has a one i'm able to reach this q1 and we have to find the transition of what happen if a zero occurs here or what happen if a one occurs here right so what happen if a zero occurs here what is its decimal equivalent one zero is equal to two one one is three and when you are dividing it by four what is the reminder you are going to get out of it here so when you are dividing 2 by 4 your reminder is 2 when you are dividing 3 by 4 your reminder is 3 so you have to make a transition here in q1 state if your input is 0 it generates the reminder as 2 so in q1 if the input is 0 it generates a reminder as 2 i make a transition to q2 state and in in q1 state if your reminder is sorry if your input is 0 it generates a reminder as 3 so in q1 if your input is 1 it generates the reminder as 3 so i am making a transition from q1 to q3 q1 so this is your state reminder is your state okay when the input is 0 it goes to q2 when the input is 1 it goes to q3 got it now q0 when the input is 0 1 we found the transition q1 when the input is 0 1 we found the transition similarly we have to find the transition for the remaining functions too so let us take this q2 state what is the minimal input that is taken to reach your q2 your transition starts from the starting uh, starting state starting state here is q0 q0 to reach q2 i at least need a 1 followed by 0 q0 to q2 this is the only path that i have the minimal path i have and that takes the input as 1 followed by 0 so at least in my input if i have 1 followed by 0 i am able to reach q2 right so this 1 followed by 0 is a mandatory condition and in q2 i am going to verify what happen if i have a 0 or what happen if i have a 1 so what is its corresponding uh, decimal equivalent 100 is 4 and 101 is 5 and when you are dividing this by 4 what is the remainder function you get it here 4 by 4 is perfectly divisible the remainder is 0 and 5 by 4 is remainder is 1 okay so when you are defining your remainder make it as a state so in q2 if your input is 0 it generates your remainder as 0 in q2 if the input is 0 it generates the reminder as 0 so i am making a transition to q0 state got it now in q2 if the input is 1 it generates the in, uh, reminder as 1 so i have to make a transition here in q2 if my input is 1 it generates reminder as 1 i am making a move to q1 state fine so now q2 is also done so what is left here q0 when the input is 0 1 we found the transition q1 when the input is 0 1 we found the transition q2 also on 0 1 we found the transition so what is left here q3 state so what takes us to reach to q3 from q0 whenever we process the input the processing starts from the starting state so q0 is your starting state and it takes at least this path minimal path to reach to q3 q0 to q1 and we have a direct path from q0 to q3 and the input is over 1 comma 1 so only if your input consists of 1 followed by 1 i am able to reach q3 and what we do here we are going to find what happen if a 0 occurs here or what happen if a 1 occurs here right so what happen if a 0 occurs here what is its equivalent decimal option of it 110 is 6 111 is 7 when you are dividing it by 4 what is the reminder it generates here dear when you are dividing 6 by 4 your reminder is 2 when you are dividing 7 by 4 your reminder is 3 right yeah now reminder function you can write it as a state in q3 if your input is 0 it generates the reminder as 2 right in q3 if your reminder is 0 it goes to q2 in q3 if the reminder is 1 it generates your sorry if the input is 1 it generates the reminder as 3 so 3 is the same state so i can make a self loop here on input as 1 whenever in q3 if the input taken is 1 i am able to 
go ahead here right i am just i get the remainder as 3 so i am just making a move to this q3 state itself okay now q0 when the input is 0 when we found the transition q1 on 1 0 q2 on 1 0 q3 on 1 0 is done and we have a starting state final state all possible input transition is done so this is the complete dfa so what is missing here nothing is missing in the dfa we have to verify so we have done the program we have to give some test cases and verify whether the input belongs to the language or not right so i'll take some example inputs uh like i can take the same sample input as one divisible by uh, one number that is divisible by 4 another number that is not divisible by 4 too so let us start with a number that is divisible by 4 um i'll just take this 8 okay what is the binary equivalent of 8 so it has to be accepted so i'll start from the starting state q not and how does we check whether the input belongs to the language we try to take one alphabet at a time and check whether the input is when the whether the transition leads to final state or not so q not when the input is one where it goes q not when the input is one it goes to q1 state what is the remaining input we have here all three zeros now q1 when the input is zero where it goes it goes to q2 and remaining inputs are two zeros this is the remaining input now q2 when the input is zero where it goes Q two on zero, it goes to the state Q naught, and you have one more zero left here. And Q naught on zero, it stays in the same state. Hence, it is accepted, right? So, it, it after consuming all the input symbol, checking all the input symbol, the transition is in final state. When the transition is in final state, the input is accepted. So, when you give eight as an input. your remind it leads into the remainder of q not and that is the final state you are going to accept it let us take another example i'll take the example as 9 1 0 0 so this is for 9 now uh, i'm going to verify whether the input belongs to the language or not so q not when the input is 1 where it goes q not on 1 it goes to q1 and the remaining input that is not processed is 0 0 1 q1 on 1 where it goes q1 when the input is 1 sorry 0 it goes to state q2 and the remaining input is 2 zeros and q2 when the input is sorry the last element is 1 i'm sorry i have uh, see 1 the remaining input is 0 0 1 and here the remaining input is 0 1 q2 when the input is 0 where it goes q2 on 0 it goes to q not state and the remaining input is 1 so q not on 1 where it goes it goes to q1 so q1 is a non final state after checking all the input symbol the transition lies in a non final state the input will be rejected only when it leads to the remainder as 0 only when it stays in this q not state the input will be accepted the remaining will be rejected for all okay so now this is done so dfa is done the verification is done so this is not just for divisible by 4 any input that you take binary input if you want to verify whether uh, it is whether it is divisible by some language or not we have to find all possible remainder of the language of that in element of the number and you have to draw this transition diagram okay when it is for 5 i'll have a reminder as 0 1 2 3 or 4 so for all this four we have to all the five states we have to include it and from each and every state on each and every possible input we have to verify whether the input belongs to the language or not okay thank you